morning everyone. Welcome to Saturday morning on my tour of Wexford Town. The first uh, monument that we've come across is the Valutan uh, Monument at Wigram. It was erected by the Wexford Corporation in uh, 1794 to show loyalty to the British forces. Um, it was erected because uh, uh, Major Charles Valutan was murdered uh, in Wexford on July 11th in 1793 while acting in uh, the expulsion of a lawless mob, supposedly, where there were uh, 80 protesters that were killed. And that was uh, happened just up the road from here at the what's now known as the, uh, the Wexford Racecourse. So I know a few years back, uh, there was a petition to try to remove it because they didn't like what it stood for. But you can see the way it is not really well kept. There is also no packs on it. It's just basically a spike of concrete that stands as you come into Wexford Town from Newtown Road. Yeah, so I'm making my way down. This is at the I'm at the top of Hill Street in Wexford Town. There's a lot of traffic coming by, so bear with me with the uh, the sound. I'm not sure how much it's going to pick up the uh, vehicles that are coming by, but we're gonna. My plan is to make it. One video, maybe, it might be a two-parter because I want to keep it around 20 minutes. I don't want it to go too, too far up. The uh, first stop we're going to go to is going to be the uh, the Republican uh, Garden, which is on the Hill Street. And then we're going to see the Corporation building, uh, which has the, uh, the, old, uh, the old prison, the old gale. And then we're going to take part on the uh, tour of the uh, Selskar Abbey, which is held by the uh, Wexford Lions Club uh, six days a week at 11 a.m. during summer. And then I'm going to go through different parts of the town. We're going to go to the Bullring. Um, we're going to see uh, the Mackins, the Cape Bar. We're going to go to the, uh, see the Bullring, explain what the Bullring is. We see the Pike Man. I'll walk along towards the Quay, see a few shops and we'll head to Commodore Barry, which is a, a monument that's right on the quay in Wexford. And then I'll take you to a very special place. I'll let you, I'll let you see it a little bit later. It's, it's one of the little gems I find of Wexford town. And then we'll finally finish up at the Barrack Street, which is the end of the, uh, the town wall that, uh, that used to be surrounding Wexford town. So here we have, it's the Republican Garden. It's a beautiful little garden that's kept in great condition. There's the tea of uh, the Tree of uh, Liberty. That was uh, planted in, to commemorate the uh, 1798, uh, and that was uh, at the 200 year anniversary. So it was planted in uh, 1998. There you have the back of the original of the, uh, the, the, old, the old jail. It was the county hall on the other side. Not a very welcoming place. I'm sure the conditions were pretty brutal at the time. And these are some Republicans uh, that are commemorating here. They're going back from 1917 to the time of the hunger strikers with Bobby Sands and the other nine people that get, lost their lives. To commemorate the 50th anniversary of Pearl Crane Hogan who gave their lives for Irish freedom, erected by the people of Wexford. Now this will be a little bit of a spoiler because uh, my next more walk that I'm planning will also encompass the uh, the, the Pearl Crane Hogan because uh, I'm planning to walk into Tamon and there is a, a little newly erected uh, garden for commemorating the three gentlemen here and uh, I'll take you a walk in the old old Tamon town which is very old and we'll go up to uh, uh, see the uh, handball alley and go to the Browns Castle. 
where they'll have uh, Mun's bed and Mun, um, St. Mun's uh, well, and it's a beautiful scenic uh, walk. And uh, maybe stop by at one of the locals, uh, have a uh, try their pint of Guinness after the nice long walk. Here's another little walk around that you could do in Wexford Town that's absolutely free. You can sit here and relax. There's a chair there if you wanted to take it in. Now we're just walking down the bottom of the hill street. I'll show you the opposite side of the jail. This used to be the Wexford County Council before they moved the, uh, to uh, Carrigwan, which is on the outskirts of town, a big modern building. But I think this, uh, the old building has some real charm. See, there's the, uh, there's the back part of the, the jail. You can see it. And then there's just the rest of the building. And now of it, I think it's uh, it's being housed by uh, a university out of Georgia. They'll have a sign on the front of it. I'm not sure which it is, but uh, Americans use it as a training facility. We'll just keep walking down the hill street. There's some beautiful, fine, big Jordan, uh, Georgian buildings there. Coming into Wexford Town. So this is just the uh, start of the town where we're coming down there, and we'll be walking right towards uh, Salskar Abbey, which we'll have the tour. The tour is going to start at 11 a.m., and we'll go through the tour and see all the, the historic and the uh, Salskar Abbey. Southern University. So we can go in and see if we can see what it looks like a bit. It's like the very old buildings. There's the water, you can see it. And this is a nice little place where you can stop and have lunch during the day. There's a school right behind us. And you can see Right here, it's a memory of deceased members of the Wexford Lions Club. The original tree, the other tree got damaged and had to be replaced. And there's the other entrance to the old county hall. It's, it's used by uh, Wexford Local Development, IT Carlo, and Good to Talk. Here's where the, the air school is. That's the uh, the Selsker College. I think we can get in there. We'll get it through here, but it's locked. Not in time, but. See the old homes that are on the outside of like these are hundreds of years old. Look at that fine door. It's a nice big building. I like the walkway. Look at that. How that work. building 
things that are used just on the right. I think they're very beautiful in themselves. Look at the big old doors. Things like that were built to last forever. Nowadays you wonder with our throwaway culture. And here we're coming up towards Selskar Abbey where we'll have the tour at 11 o'clock. You can see this used to be the part of the old town wall that you'd have to enter in to get into Wexford Town. There were, it was the, Wexford Town was surrounded by these walls. Now you'll find out more about that during the tour. So now I'm going to go into my Asian uh, Asian food restaurant, uh, re not restaurant, uh, shop. It's called Select Asia. This is where I usually come on Saturdays and I get my my treats for the week. I'll come in and see and show you around a bit. Hello. See all the different selections and spices. And Lots of rice, lots of different types of flour, snacks. So many different. These are all meat puddle snacks. A lot of them are spicy, but I like spices. Lots and lots of spices. Different types of lentils, chickpeas, flour, nuts, coconuts, lentils, lentils, beans, and then they have the freezing parts. I love those portoras. They're basically like a floury potato pancake-y thing that you just heat up on the pan for a couple of minutes on each side and they're just so tasty. I always get them. And all these different noodles and stuff. I'm gonna come back later and I'll get my Stock and all these little snacks. These are these are my favorite. Absolutely love these. And the girls like these garlic and vinegar corn chips. And there's tons and tons of different sizes. <laughs> different flavored lays. Chewy lime. India's Magic Masala, Chili Chakra, Masala Munch. There's tons and tons of selection. You, can, you never get bored. You come in here and you look around and you see something different every time. This is it's a nice sambal sauce. I use this all the time, especially when I'm making uh, noodles. I put that in the noodles to give it a little kick. See them. All the different vinegars and sauces. Very good. It's my favorite store. I come yeah. here every Saturday. Oh yeah. <laughs> I know this. Blog? Yeah, YouTube. Yeah. So, Thank I, you. I just wanted to come and show people like I'm doing Wexford Town oh, yeah, okay. uh, today, and uh, I wanted to show them some places that uh, they might not notice. Oh yeah. And every time I come in here, I notice there's more and more people coming. So, it's getting it's very popular and. Uh, you have a lot of nice little stuff that you don't really get anywhere else, you know. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi there. So this is Redmond Square. It's the center of Wexford Town. It was named after the Redmond family. It's 
where the, the bus and train station is, and it's basically the start in the cave. There's the old Dunn stores. It's been there forever. John Edward Redmond, last MP of New Ross, 1881 to 1885. Chairman of the Parliamentary Minority from 1891 to 1900. Chairman of the Irish Parliamentary Party, 1900 to 1918. He's from Kilran area, I think. He was, he was born. So it's the Redmond family. So. There's the train station. That's a statue of the pikeman. It's a bronze. It was a. Uh, sculpted by Oliver Shepard. Uh, it was erected in 1905 and it's to commemorate the uh, it was to commemorate the uh, rebellion in 1798. It's in right in the center of the bull ring and then in back there's a little marketplace that goes back a ways. Now it's interesting I'll tell you a bit about the bull ring which is this whole area here in front of Mackins, which we'll go later. I, I'm gonna meet uh, meet the owner and we'll have a little chat about it. And then here's the shops. It's open now. It's you can see it's all still has the COVID protocols of people on the left and right. But back to the the bull ring. The name was uh, derived from the uh, the medieval sport of bull baiting. It was introduced by the town's uh, butchers guild from 1621 to 1770. It's a bit of a gruesome tale because basically what happened, the bull, uh, bulls were presented twice a year and the hides went to the mayor at the time and then the meats were then after butchered and uh, the town folks would get the meat. Now basically what happened is they would take a bull and they would uh, tie him up there and the townspeople would take their, their dogs, they'd get all their dogs and basically went go after the bull and they would just try to get the undersides of the bull and kill it. So it was a very, very gruesome tradition in Wexford, but that's where the bull ring got the name from. And you can see, it's just a nice little square. So we're gonna go walk up a bit to where the town wall continues at the top here. Um, and this is where North Main Street and South Main Street start, so it's, you can see. And uh, there's the rest of the uh, the Main Street, where we walk in down that a little bit later. Like I said, it's a very quaint. Like right now, there's not that many people. It's still early, but it will get very busy. Here's the old, the old buildings, Kelly's of the Corn Market. They've been there for eons. And then this monstrosity was put up during COVID. There's an outdoor, which is supposed to be temporary. And then they got permission somehow to build this permanent structure. So they have a three year permission for it. And it's, it's not only is it an eyesore, but it's also a safety hazard because it's so, it's a blinding half the side when you're, 
you're going up the street like and then this is the art center it has just had a renovation a facelift it used to be just that part of the building and in the corner you can see the Wexford library and there's part of the old town wall if you're behind the barriers where they're they're doing the renovation you can see how it just goes over and if you look down in the distance there's Selsker Abbey again it goes all the way down the town there if you look to the left up on the other side of the train tracks there you see the tourist office I often wondered why they put the tourist office so far away. I thought it should always be closer to the train station and bus station so when people get off, but people in power must know better. This has all recently been renovated. Um, it's all modern with marble. Looks nice, but it's a, it's a big job they did. There's a lot of traffic here in Wexford, you can see, because of the bridge and the point. There was talk about making it a one-way system, so you'd come one way on this way with double lanes, and then the upper side street of John Street would be the other way. So and Here we're coming to the uh, Commodore John Barry Monument. This was uh, presented in 1956 by, uh, made by Wheeler Williams of Chicago. It was presented to the people of Ireland by the U.S. commemoration of John Barry from 1745 to 1803 and his outstanding contribution to the naval annals of the adopted country. So he's basically known as the founder of the American Navy. I'm just walking up a small street to go to the main street again. It's called Henrietta Street. Like I say, this has all been renovated in the last few years too. They put up all these bollards there to prevent people from parking because if you have a car that parks on the side, it would just block up everything. But usually when they were making deliveries and stuff. So. We have the locksmith, Sue Ryder, charity shop, cream coffee shop, sewing places. There's horror stores up on the right. And then here we have on the corner Simon Lambert's and Sons. It's a it's a pub with food and food and drink. It's a very nice establishment. And now we're back up onto the main street. These are like pound shops, mega mix. Sports Direct. You got a retro place. Some more vapes. Costa Coffee. It's a tattoo flower upstairs. NCBI, Heffernan's Bar, and now we're turning up, this is Peter Street. This will take us right up to Red Books, and then after we have the meeting, I'm going to take you down an alleyway just up here, and it's really interesting, and it takes us right to Bride Street. Bride Street was the other church that we talked about, so you had the Rose Street, Bride Street's, it's, uh, it's twin, 
and like I said, they're only separated by, I'd say like seven, eight hundred meters the most, not that much. And here you can take this path to right to the uh, Opera House and you see right there you could see the Rose Street Chapel peak and then just to the left would be the Bright, uh, Bright Street. See the old buildings? Here's another coffee stop. Coffee seems very important. Here. See the sign there? The books. That's where we're heading. It's used books. Very reasonable price. And it's a labyrinth. Like you can go in there and spend hours. And you wouldn't see it. Go, go again and you wouldn't see half of it. That's the uh, Peter Street uh, band stand. You can see. Well, there's not that much music that usually goes on there. So here's what I'm talking about. I'll go out a bit on the road. And I'll show you what it looks like. So here it is from the outside. So it used to be just this one little nook, but then they've taken over the left side. There's the hours. Hey Wally. How are you? How are you? Good, good. So, it's very warm out there, eh? It's uh, unbelievable. Yeah. So, Costa del Webster. Yeah, so, do you want to, would you be able to talk me through your idea of what came of this? Like, what was the idea that started this? And Absolutely. Well, we started in November 2016 in a side shed in Bridgetown. Um, there was a Christmas fair on and I set it up as a kind of a temporary thing. I always loved books. I would always spend my time when I wasn't working in bookshops or hunting for books and uh, I just kind of fell into it. Um, it, it was really, I suppose, I was a refugee of the recession um, and I had lost my job. I had gone into other things. I wasn't really fulfilled. And it was just pure luck mm. and I love yeah. it we've, we've never looked back since so we were the smallest bookshop in Ireland we moved in to Wexford Town three years ago tomorrow is actually our third anniversary of moving in here and we took over this unit which was so much bigger than our original shop I think it was six times the size of our original shop and then two months ago we took over our next door neighbours and um, so we've now gone from being the smallest bookshop in Ireland to being one of the larger independents. How did the pandemic affect you? The pandemic was a killer um, in, in some ways uh, for everybody. With hindsight, if we had saw the pandemic coming, we wouldn't have moved into Exeter Town which would have probably put us out of business because we wouldn't have been able to operate at all in our old shop it was so small. But our customers are so loyal. We have so many friends, so many writers and readers to hang around this shop. They all got behind us. We set up a website. People from around the country supported us. And in some ways, there were silver linings because people who had never seen us before found us. And uh, this summer, we've met a lot of those people for the first time who would have supported us during lockdown just coming into the shop to say hello. Now that they're able to travel now. Yeah, too, and yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, and what, about, what about the other projects you have? Yeah, I know you had a few other projects with the writing club and stuff like that. And That's right. What, what was the, uh, this, the idea behind that? Uh, yeah. yeah, well, when we opened first, I always had an interest in creative writing. I knew that there was a couple of guys hanging around the shop in Bridgetown that were into it. So we set up a writer's group out there. We thought if we had, if we'd have three or four people, it would be a success. In the end, people just kept coming. When we opened up in here, people just kept coming. So I think for the first few months before COVID struck, we actually had three separate writing groups going in here because there was so much interest. We recently restarted them in the room out here every Thursday night 
we find that despite the fact that it's on every week, we always get a full house. Um, we expect to actually have to start a second group when winter comes, because there'll be more demand. There's just so much creativity around this town and this county. Um, it's, it's one of the, the lucky benefits of working in, in bookselling at the moment, because you get to meet such interesting characters coming in, people like yourself and poets, writers, musicians, playwrights, just constantly coming in. And it's, it's brilliant. But I think you have a lot to do with that too, by having this place. You know, you you brought it up. Well, you know, yeah, you, well, you know. Yes. Um, thanks. I go. I know the the writing groups. They produce their own books and stuff, and you get to sell they them. They do. We set up a little publishing house here um, in the height of COVID. And we read Books Press, and we started. Pub it was it's a publishing cooperative, really. And um, we tried to put forward money for, for certainly for the anthologies we fund them. But uh, some of the writers will fund to us to have a little bit of money, and we'll add money to it to get to get them out, get them in print. We'll sell the books then um, from the shop here and from our website, theirishbookshop.com, and that enables us to get Wexford writers into America, into Australia, into the rest of Europe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, by the way, I'll be putting that uh, link at the bottom of this, so you can link up and find more information about the bookstore. Uh, do you want to take me a quick little tour of the place if you can? Yeah, I know it's sure. Busy, but sure. I'm trying not to take too much time here. Oh, you want to take care of him? Yeah. Yeah, take care of him first. Yeah, I will do. I will do. Yeah. Fantastic. And this. Yeah, and that one. The whole lot. Yeah, three euro. Hang on one minute. Can you time on your record? Yeah. Um, I broke my, my nail. 20 to 1. 20 to 1, yeah. It's very bad. Yeah. I do something, I do a fucking fantastic. <laughs> fucking fantastic job, man. Hello. Hello, Pat. How are you? You're looking well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lovely we'll, day, isn't it? We'll plod on. <laughs> no, I'll go and have a, yeah. a coffee. Alright. We'll talk to you soon. A yug. Next time I'll be in, I'll be, have to have a look through that back down there. Yeah. It's really hard. hard. Yeah. It's, oh, sorry. Alright, I get that. No matter. Yeah. It's very hard. I'm uh, working here part time. <laughs> I'm just going to get a book and then finish for the day. <laughs> <laughs> and he's getting a full door there. Yeah, 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 he's getting a good boy job. Bye now. I'll see you. Look yeah, after yeah. yourselves. <laughs> yeah, show me the. Because, like I said, there's a labyrinth here. Like a, you can go around all the places and. Yeah. Well, down here we have our kids' room. We're looking. See you later. We, we get a lot of kids coming in, which is great. This idea that young people don't read anymore is absolute nonsense. Um, Jeez, they're just packed, eh? And down here, then, we have crime. It's always a little bit iggly piggly, so yeah. we have romance. We come down into this room. We've got cult fiction. We've got some odd stuff here we've got biographies you can get lost in here couldn't you people have <laughs> this is Dotty Cavanaugh one of our local writers <laughs> this room in here is a complete mess at the moment we're in the process of rebuilding this room because uh so out here then where do you get all your books we have a couple of independent suppliers. We also bring in new books from the UK. Okay. Um, we've got DVDs here. We've got contemporary fiction. We we'll also buy from auctions. We we'll buy house clearances. So we're always looking out for for books that are out of print. Yeah. So yeah. In here, then this is all part of the news area. The new shop. Tons and tons of books, eh? This is our history. We sell some antiques as well. And out here then, we have a lot of our Wexford books and our local orders. Okay. 
So these are all relatively new local titles. Okay. And a lot of these would come from your writers group that you had? Yeah, a lot of these are Red Books Press. Um, this is the comic book that's been brought out recently by a young guy in um, just in the south of the county. Name and call for is a local playwright, Richard Williams. This is our an latest anthology, Wexer Bohemian. Okay. So we accept submissions for that from across the world. These are all Wexer books that are out print. They're always really popular. These are all new books. And of course, Antiquarian. And then we've always got interesting customers around here too. Readers and writers, that's the thing that really keeps us, yeah. keeps us in business. Well, thanks very much for taking the time for this. Like I said, uh, I appreciate the, what you've done for Wexford Town and I think hopefully when this video gets uploaded and that and people see it and when they do come down to Wexford yeah. they'll stop by. It's not too far from the main street. So. Absolutely and we're right. open every day. Thank you. Thank you.